Talking to a victim's family is always a tough thing to do. I know that contacting them might dredge up horrible memories, but I need to find out more information about George Colazzo in my search for the truth. Also, it's only respectful that they know what I'm up to. I find one of George's sisters living in North Carolina. I send her an email and then give her a call. Hello? It's Dan Slepian. How are you? She's hesitant to talk on the phone, but says she'll be in New York in a few months and would rather meet then, so we set a date. Yeah, but this is important, and I would make time. And I let her know I'd like to film our conversation when we do. We set up our cameras in a room in the NBC News offices, and I wait for her to show up. I think that she's going to be a little bit nervous. She was hesitant when I told her that I wanted to film this, but we want to be able to document, you know, what she says. What I want to learn from her is certainly more about her brother, but I'll also see if she has anything that can add to my investigation. Um, I just hope she shows up. And she does. I'm so glad that you came. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Her name is Wanaka Kalatza. She tells me she adored her little brother and is here to make sure someone speaks for him. So you brought a picture of George. She tells me how George was the youngest of five. He, he died the day after my 20th birthday. The much loved baby boy of four older sisters. He played football, he played little league for years. Um, he loved it. We loved going to his games to watch him. She he says she'll never forget the moment she heard what happened. She was at work and called home. Her father answered the phone. He said, your brother's been shot. I don't know how bad it is, but I just need you to get here. That's like the worst. <laughs> The worst feeling. But if there was any silver lining for Wanaka in those first weeks, she says it was that a suspect was quickly in custody. And you feel a relief, but you don't want to be sure at the same time that they get the right person. You know, I felt like I needed more. My sister Thina, she felt like she needed more. Mm -hmm. and so Wanaka and her sister decided to face the man accused of their brother's murder and went to visit Richard Rosario in Rikers Island Jail, where he was being held awaiting trial. We told him who we were and she said, we just really want to talk to you and just see what you have to say. His body language is, oh, and he just like looked this. He just couldn't look at us. He's like, I, was, I didn't do it. I was in Florida. Like, just very like, and he just, that's all he would say. He should have just been like, I did not do this. Like, I'm sorry this happened, but it was not me. Those words never came out of his mouth. It was just a... An angry denial. Yes. So it wasn't what he was saying, it was how he was communicating. Correct. And that day, my sister and I decided, yeah, they got the right person. Rosario didn't exactly strike me as the friendliest guy either, but why in the world would he treat the victim's family that way? Here's, a, here's Richard. Mm -hmm. I ask Richard about that when he calls me. Richard? Yeah. Hi. I tell Rosario what Wanaka said about meeting him. She said that she went to go visit you when you were arrested originally. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah, I remember that. It was just weird to be speaking to them. I gave them my condolences. That's one of the things I told them. But you know, I never met their brother. I was in Florida. And she says that you did not give her any condolences. She said that you were wouldn't look at her in the eye, that you were rude, you were mean to her, and kind of convinced her that you were guilty. Mm -hmm. When one did that, I may have come off as angry, but you know, it wasn't necessarily towards them. All I know is I'm in prison for a crime I didn't commit. I, I can see how they could misconstrue that as me being angry towards them. Well, his attitude certainly convinced Wanaka he was guilty. I believe he did it. I don't think he's innocent at all. So I wonder what she'd think of all those alibi witnesses who say Rosario was in Florida. That's how I know that he's innocent. Because he is She is not sold. No doubt in your mind. No doubt in my mind. I don't believe it. Nope. These are all people that knew him. I also show her what that eyewitness Robert Davis told me. They did say that. The cop did tell me that. Again, she's not buying it. You know, years later, things could become confusing. And imagine for somebody at his age how it can get. But even though she believes Rosario is guilty, she tells me something else that gets my attention even more. Were you shocked that it happened? No. 
Why? Because he was scared. There was He knew something was going to happen. She insists her brother's murder was not the result of a random altercation and that the police and prosecutors got the theory of the crime wrong. I'm like, are you guys like this is so ridiculous? Ridiculous, she says, because George actually told her he was a target, that he knew someone was after him. Which is the reason why, she says, George was found with a gun in his jacket when he was killed. The only reason why he had that gun was because he was scared and he felt like maybe he could scare somebody off with it. He knew something was going to happen to him because he slapped that girl. Just two weeks before her brother's murder, Wanaka says George slapped a girl from the neighborhood who he thought was disrespecting him. That's the first thing that came to your mind? Was he was, that's the only thing he was scared of. Tell me exactly what he told you. He said, um, we went to her job, and she said some nasty stuff to me, and I smacked her. And he was like, and she said she's going to take care of me for that. She so, said those words to him. You're absolutely convinced that she's I'm involved? Absolutely convinced. She's part of this. I know she's part of this. What was her name? I, I don't remember. This slapping incident sounds like it could be important. But according to Wanaka, it's a lead the detectives did not vigorously investigate. No one ever interviewed you guys? No. The cops never interviewed you? No. And asked you about your brother's past? Nope. Not a word. Never? Nobody in your family? No. At the beginning of this investigation? No. Was Wanaka right? Was her brother's murder not random after all? Was George Colazzo a target? That's next on Conviction.